Dennis Breakfast with Bob. Welcome, everybody. 10th anniversary breakfast with Bob. We were brought to you by Hookah, by Polar, by UCAN, VeloFix, Normatech, Active Canyon, Form Goggles, Amp Human, Four Seasons Resort, Hualalai. This, again, is our 10th anniversary at beautiful Huggos on the Rocks. Our next guest, Ironman New Zealand champion, Jocelyn McCauley. <laughs> That's Thank pretty you. fun. Yeah. Congrats on 10 years here. That's Isn't awesome. that fun? That's so fun. It's really, really fun. We started like with just two of us over on the other side, and now, look at this, a studio audience. Yeah. It's the best thing there is. <laughs> Are you guys having a good time? Yeah. We appreciate everybody being out here. Meeting the greatest athletes on the planet, that's sort of fun. Yeah. So last year was a goldfish year. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were saying earlier. Yeah. What, what, I just what, is, what does a goldfish year mean? <laughs> uh, I just want to forget it. So, like, goldfish forget everything. So last year was a goldfish year. <laughs> so during the run, it was just like you had blown up. You're walking with your, with your husband. and. Yeah, yeah. I walked down the Queen K with my husband and daughter hand in hand, which I wish I had a picture of, but I don't. Um, but uh, I got to show my daughter that you finish what you start, no right. matter what. And so I, I think that was, that was a good lesson for me and for her um, in the long run, even though I want to forget it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're one of those kids when you were little in kindergarten. You were doing the drawing of yourself on the Olympic podium with the medal. Oh, and no, the no, whole no, no, no. Finishing first in the Olympics. Oh, not just the Why podium. Why just be on the podium? <laughs> You don't want to be at a podium. If, if, why be on a podium if you have to look up at somebody? Exactly. So you might as well, well when you're dreaming, you might as well dream big. So yeah, first. first. So you always. So you saw it on TV. Or how did you even know about it? Um, about the Olympics? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think every little kid knows about the Olympics. Okay. I don't know. I, it's so, so huge in the U.S. And so, so I obviously I haven't been to the Olympics. Um, unlike the next person you have here, Sarah. True. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah but like I, I say that Kona is my Olympics. It is. And it's even a bonus because it comes every year, not every four. I, I've always told people that. And actually, for, and for a long time, I, I think if you asked Jan Ferdano what had a bigger impact on his career, winning the yeah. gold or winning here, he would I think he'd say here. Oh. I would, cool. I would think he would say here. So you ran cross country, went to BYU. How'd you go from BYU to finding the sport of triathlon? Was that your sister? Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I got injured a couple of times my very last year at the University of Cincinnati. And then, um, yeah, my sister started doing these crazy all-day events called Ironman. And I was like, why in the world would you work out all day? That sounds like an awful, awful, awful idea. Right. Um, but I would go and support her at these races and stuff. And the atmosphere is so electrifying and addicting. Like, I mean, everyone's been to a start line. And, yes, and it's just it's the best. Yeah, I was like, well, I have to be part of this just once. Just once. That's what everybody says, just once. It's and what was the first one? <laughs> Ironman Texas 2014. And you're an amateur at that point. Yeah. And I'm guessing you probably qualified for this race there. Yeah. Yeah. You're one of those slow learner types. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you immediately, <laughs> you immediately qualified for here. And did you first, were your first amateur here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How come this stuff doesn't surprise me in the least? I don't, I don't get it. And so, but you had a, a, what, a, a master's of science, exercise physiology, a BS in nursing. Yeah. And you, so you got real job. You got real things going on. Uh, yeah, I had real job and I was a mom. So I, uh, yeah, I was a uh, one year into mommyhood, uh, my first Ironman. So yeah. So you signed up for Muncie, uh, then you find out you're pregnant. Uh, that was my first half. Yeah, yeah, that was in 2013. I did my first half. I had signed up for Muncie, and then I found out I was pregnant. I was like, well, and my due date was about 10 weeks before. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, 10 weeks after the race. Yes. I was like, yeah, it's fine. I'll just train through, and it'll be all good and it was fine <laughs> wait so wait wait 11 weeks after the baby yeah it ended up being 10 and a half she was born on wednesday and then 10 and a half weeks later i, I did one see i did a 458 Four feet, you went sub five yeah <laughs> after like 11 weeks after having 10 and a half weeks my after. very first half iron man yeah <laughs> and so you knew that this is a good sport for you i knew it was fun I mean, it, everything is, like, when you're good at something, it's fun. So I was like, oh, this is fun. Let's just keep going and see what happens. And when did you get to the point where you felt like, you know, I think I can make a living at doing this? I mean, you were still working, part, you were still working I'm guessing. Yeah. And squeezing this stuff in because you're yeah. a mom and you have jobs. Yeah. Um, I think it... Honestly, it was actually when I went pro, my husband kind of sat me down. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's a lot smarter man than I am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's not here, so <laughs> I can say that. Um, and so he sat me down and he was like, you know what, we have, 
we have, you know, you're a mom, you know, you're really heavily involved in your church, you are a wife, and you're working, and you have triathlon. So we have these five things. One of them has to go. Obviously, these are not going to go. So it was like work or triathlon. And so work went. Work went? <laughs> and yeah. you've never regretted it? Never. Never. I mean, I actually was really glad uh, last yesterday that I have a nursing background because I sliced through my thumb to my bone. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, so you just It's just glued nice it up? super glue, and we're good. <laughs> super glue. Is what they always use. Uh, doctors make big use of super glue. I like it. Yeah, in surgery, so it's all good. <laughs> so this year, Ironman Texas, and not that many people have had battles against Daniela Reef. <laughs> you did. I did. How fun was that? So fun. I planned for that. So. Did yeah. you? Oh, for sure. Um, it, I remember I crossed the finish line at Ironman New Zealand, which was in March this year. Um, I After won, you won it. Uh, yeah. And broke the run course record for about 10 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and the course record. Yeah. Um, and my, uh, my oldest sister always knows that I've, I've wanted to race Reef outside of the World Championship. And um, she, Reef announced, that it was like that day, she announced that she was going to do Ironman Texas. She comes up to me and you'll, you'll never guess what's happening. And, and you know, she tells me and I'm like, I was like more excited about that and then I just won. I was like, sweet, I actually get a racer outside the World Championship. Like, game on, let's do this. And so, um, you know, between there and, and Texas, I just set up a great race plan, race training with my uh, coach and it was, yeah, battle so on. So <laughs> you, you outsplit Daniela um, by 19 seconds on the bike, right? Yep. And you led off the bike. I did. By about eight seconds. I did. <laughs> yeah. And by eight miles, and you, you had, uh, what? Two, I think two minutes. Two minutes on Daniela? Yeah. Yeah. And I, we kept that. It was about two minutes for the majority of the run that yes. I, I kept in front of her. And then she made a very decisive pass. So. Yes. Where? <laughs> How far in? Um, I don't know. It was about like, four miles to go or so? Yeah, it was about there. Uh, we actually did all of our training for this race um, in the Woodlands, which is where Ironman Texas is. Yeah. And uh, every single long run, I got to pass that spot at least twice. It was drilled into my mind. You knew exactly. So <laughs> she ran, Daniela ran 257.24, and you, you, and you were... Uh, you were only 153 down at the end of the yeah. uh, at the end of the race. I know, a minute and 53 seconds. It's a little too long. So yeah. were you jazzed that you got second, or were you I should have had her, <laughs> or a little of both? <laughs> a little of both. I went into Ironman Texas with two goals, two main goals um, for that race. One was to beat Reef. Yes. Um, I was very frank and honest about that. And the other one was to, and I didn't say this one out loud, was to beat the American record. I was, I think I was 13 seconds off of that. So I didn't accomplish either one of those goals, but I made a big splash in triathlon, so it was okay. <laughs> so here, the plan again is to beat Reef. So... <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. I know. I, I, I am very outspoken and very feisty, um, usually. Yes. So. Um, what is the goal here? The goal is to do my best to win this race. Um, and I think on the perfect day, it's possible. Okay. I think that a lot can happen in Kona. So we'll just, I mean, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to put my best foot forward, just like everyone always says. Like, right. I'm going to you know, go execute my race, and I will, um, but I am also a gutsy racer, and I um, put everything out there on the line, so. You won't hesitate to go for it if you see something. I some will not hesitate. To go for it. And do you look at, you know, is, is there a, where you want to go, I want to have X amount of time off the bike, or do you go in with that type of goal, or you just play it minute by minute? I think it's just minute by minute, like, especially for this race, you just have to uh, come hundred percent be in the moment mm -hmm. every single minute of the race. And that's how you're going to execute your best race is to just absolutely be in the moment and make those game time decisions. And you have to make them fast because if you don't make them fast enough, then the decision is made for you. Um, so yeah, I mean, game on. <laughs> Did Danielle say anything to you after Texas? Did you guys see, obviously you were only like two minutes apart, less than two minutes apart. Yeah, we, I mean, and then we, we were waiting for third place, so we chatted there on uh, the finish line for a bit and everything. Yes. And so, yeah, I mean, she's a very, very nice lady. So. But you still want to beat her. I think, I think that, um, <laughs> no, I mean, because I'm a very Christian person, so this is something that I've thought about a lot yes. lately, is um, 
like wanting to beat all these other women, you know, but then also like having that Christ-like attitude um, that I also want to have. And um, I think it just comes down to like we build each other up and we when we race each other, like all of us women, mm -hmm. when we're racing each other, we're elevating the sport even more because we're pushing each other that much harder and that much faster. And I mean, and that's why like 10 years ago, a, a 315 marathon would win this race. Yes. And why you have to run sub three now. You have to yeah, all, yeah, run sub three, three run 250, it, yeah. whatever you got to do. Yeah, we have run 250 for uh, Rennie when she won that year. That was insane. That was awesome. And so it's just like us coming together and us absolutely wanting each other to all have our best races will elevate all of us even more. Love it. How about a round of applause for Jocelyn McCauley? <laughs> you are the best. Oh, you're the best. <laughs> Pacho Man! Woo!